Think of this as an intro to Cisco switching at the CCNP level. I'm going to discuss the environment, the LAN environment, and talk about where we've come from. I'm going to assume also at this point that you're fundamentally familiar with CCNA level technology, how to set up, configure, and administer, and I'm going to discuss technological evolution here. Evolution of the LAN environment moving from the hubs to the switches to the layer 3 switches where we are nowadays and lead that into Cisco's model for networking in the state of the art. The Cisco Enterprise Composite Network Model and give you a fundamental concept of network design. Now that we have all this cool technology, how do you make it work for you? And I'll talk a little bit about design strategy to help you comprehend it. From VLANs to spanning tree protocol to where routed links come in and all that stuff. And finally, I'll talk about the switch operating systems that exist today. The old one, CAT OS, and the modern one, native iOS. So let's get going. Okay. So if you've hung with the network landscape over the years, you've actually witnessed the evolution yourself. So, as every technology changes, so does this. Back in the late 80s and early 90s, we had our hubs, and I still actually, truth be told, have a few hubs around that for some reason I just haven't gotten rid of. Now on a hub, every packet, frame, and bit that's sent out goes to every single device that is connected to the hub. A hub is a layer one device, a physical layer device, if you're referring to the OSI model, all seven layers, the bottom layer is the physical layer, and that's where the hub resides. All it does is simply regenerate the signal and send it back out. And the problem with hubs is, as soon as you get around to, say, 20 or 30 devices, you begin getting a lot of collisions happening. These packet collisions re require retransmission of the data. Now, these broadcast collisions slow down everything. And with modern applications of today, you just can never consider sending something like voice over IP, like telephone, over a hub. Never. So everything changed when the Layer 2 switch came out. And when it went mainstream, switches introduced wonderful technology to us. Every single port on a switch was its own collision domain. This is the concept behind what is known as network segmentation, or even micro-segmentation. Your traffic only goes to the destination that you're sending it to specifically, unless it's a broadcast. And that is what then became the limiting factor with Layer 2 switches. Broadcast traffic is always sent everywhere by design, so you'd reach a scalability limit with regard to broadcasts. But you're talking about a point where you hit 200, 300, or possibly even more devices on a switch before there was noticeable slowdown. But layer 2 switching did allow some real enterprise level scalability, and this is also where we started to see VLANs come out, or virtual local area networks. VLANs changed everything because we thought, great, now we don't need to put routers between everything. We can use these VLANs to segment, and we can use also something called a router on a stick. It's a funny sounding name, but at the CCNA level, router on a stick is the only inter-VLAN solution that is spoken of seriously. By definition, there is no communications between VLANs unless it is routed at the IP layer. Switching takes place at layer 2, routing is layer 3. But the router on the stick has a limitation. And that would be where we attach the router, like this. It just shoots off from the switch via trunk port. Now, suppose in this case we've got three VLANs hanging off this switch. And for argument's sake, we have 50 devices in each VLAN. That could be a fair amount of traffic. And suppose we call them VLAN 30, 40, and 50. But the limitation of router on a stick is the trunk itself, because the traffic is all being routed from VLAN 30 to the router and back to, say, VLAN 40, then from 40 to the router and back to 50, like this. So you end up with a yo-yo type situation. Simultaneously, all this traffic's going on. So even though this is somewhat scalable, and it was viable for a lot of business, this is actually a bottleneck. So the bandwidth of that trunk became your scalability limitation because the link is only just so fast. And if you're lucky, it's gigabit. 
So that's why layer 3 switches came out. Boom. This guy. Switching takes place at layer 2 of the OSI model. Routing takes place at layer 3, but if you have a layer 3 switch with routing functions built right into it, now you can have those three VLANs or however many VLANs you want. It's all inside the switch. It's a swouter. Now you can create switch virtual interfaces inside the switch, say for interface VLAN 30, interface VLAN 40, and interface VLAN 50, and you can give them all their own IP addresses. Now with it being strictly inside the switch, the limiting factor is the speed of the backplane of the switch itself. You've got gigs and gigs and gigs per second of bandwidth there, available for your routing purposes. And in our mainstream or multi-layer switches, there is no slowdown now. Not like with one or two Cat5 cables trunking an exterior router. This is much, much faster. So the Layer 3 switch changed everything. And this is where we are today. Now we have some pretty good elements in place for controlling enterprise scale or global networking, but we need a design to follow, an overall plan. So after thinking about it, you wonder, where do you put your Layer 3 switches? Should every switch be a Layer 3 switch? Where do your VLANs go? Do you spread them campus-wide? How does all this work? And that is where Cisco came out with their Enterprise Composite Network Model or ECN. And before I get into the ECN, I want to answer this general question. What's wrong with just plug-and-play switches? I mean, can't you just take a switch and plug it into another switch? And the answer, truthfully, and I'll be honest with you, most of the time is not much, or only just so far. And when I say most of the time, I'm, prefer I, I, I'm referring primarily to smaller businesses this is where the gray area is. Think about it. If you start a company and it's you and just a couple other guys or gals and you start a company selling pet dust bunnies, say, you get together and you say, let's build a network to track our pet dust bunny sales progress and our customer demographics and all that kind of business stuff. So you and a couple of guys get together and figure all this out and start to install stuff. But you're not going to buy a Cisco 6500 switch of the latest variety, and the truth is you're most likely not going to even go to Cisco at all. Cisco is just simply too expensive. It's high-end. You're going to your local office supply and you'll pick up a little trend net or a Belkin or a Linksys or maybe a Netgear device that's an all-in-one router, access point, switch, plug in everything and go to work cheap type of device. But eventually as your business does start growing and dust bunnies capture the hearts of the world and you go global with this eventually you're going to start attaching an extra switch to that because you're going to run out of ports you know after you've hired a couple hundred employees so you plug a crossover cable in and then another crossover cable and you start attaching more switches kinda like this so that's my question what's wrong with this well, honestly, nothing, fundamentally nothing, is wrong with that. You get, say, 5, 10, 15 people, add another application server, or you expand your domain with a, you know, a backup controller and a backup storage server, and maybe you want replication of your vital business data now. And eventually the business just grows large enough that you become, become actually truly dependent upon this technology. In other words, if you were to have a fire and the office is burned down, your notebook's not going to save you, usually after a certain point. If the network goes down, the business goes down with it. The company stops, profit is lost, and payroll that week is very difficult at best. So uh, another thing you think about is security. You start worrying that security standards for both the network and vital customer data are in place. You start wondering all kinds of things like, is our Wi-Fi a security hazard? What about temporary visitors on our network? Or active viruses or hacking exploits? But these considerations are only usually occurring as you become larger. And truth be told, Cisco doesn't really have a model based on this that they follow. They don't have a model to reach business like this. It's called ad hoc networking. 
Cisco is an enterprise company, and sure, their equipment can actually be found in small or mid-sized offices, but they actually have a division now that's devoted to this. They acquired it to handle the needs of the special category of the small business. It's Linksys, and it's known as Cisco Small Business by any other name. That's where this model exists, the no standards, patch stuff together and make it work small business model. And if you do want to see Cisco's model for small business, if you were to consult with Cisco and they set you up, they would do this to you. This is Cisco's first level model of small business. You get rid of the switch at the top, make it a layer 3 device, chop off the two smaller switches at the end of each leg, and you have at least two switches beneath the layer 3 switch. They always start with a layer 3 switch, always. And when, you, when you're when you thinking layer 3 switch, you can also equip... <laughs> that's equivalent with, say, three, four, or $5,000. So they're immediately going for companies that can say to themselves, we can do that. They've got a budget where they can throw away a few dollars for a productive reason, of course. Now, <clears throat> if you have plug-and-play switches, here are the things that can go wrong with them. Something like this. You could lose your central switch. That really breaks your network up. Or maybe you lose a link to a router and you lose half your network. It becomes complicated to use spanning tree protocol in these types of environments. Spanning tree protocol is a network loop prevention mechanism. It is very possible that in one of your plug and play ad hoc switches, they may not even support spanning tree protocol. This can then allow feedback loops in your switches leading to crippling broadcast storms where one broadcast generates a whole bunch of broadcasts which generates a whole avalanche of broadcasts that crushes your network. In general there will be an increase in broadcast traffic and multicast traffic so your bandwidth starts getting eaten up by sporadic gusts of this traffic which, depending upon what application you're running, can interrupt important actions or applications, if not halt the application entirely. Your switches simply begin to slow down, and their capacity to switch useful data becomes hampered, because they become more and more involved in dealing with broadcasts. Security is definitely an issue now, too. Everything is a flat Layer 2 domain.